footy blues. Everything football. Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Sasha. Hey, this is Roman. Welcome back to another episode of Footy Brews. This one special request from one of you guys. Glad you guys are getting involved in the comments. We're doing Italy today. Wow, the Italian, the Azzurri. The, the That's right. Italian champions. Wow, I'm excited. And they're a little bit of the dark horse in this, uh, <laughs> in this Euros. Not too much have been spoken about them, but after looking at their, their lineups, man, they're definitely not going to be a joke. For sure. I mean, I watch the Italian league, so I know most of these players, and I, I was kind of thinking to myself that they have actually have a very solid team from all around, and it's not that there's too many superstars, but they have a very solid, equal balance team. I think that's the most important thing about this Azuri team. Mm -hmm. That's a very good point. Now we'll start it right off. Uh, Roberto Mancini uh, officialized his team recently. Uh, so who do we have in that, Sash? So there's three keepers, as all the national teams we already know have chosen. So we got Giuliani Donnarumma, who plays for Milan. We got Alex Maret, who plays for Napoli. And then we have Salvatore Sirigu, a kind of an old school keeper, and that's who plays for Torino. So those are the three keepers. And what do you think of these guys? I think uh, Gianluigi uh, Donnarumma is definitely the starting keeper here. He's the starting keeper for AC Milan, which has had an incredible season. And he's a big up-and-coming young keeper. So, if uh, if I'm uh, Mancini, I'm I'm probably starting Donnarumma. For sure. I mean, Donnarumma is the future of Italy. He's been playing since he was what 18 years old. This guy is massive, massive from Milan as well. And you know mm -hmm. what? He's solid, and he's going to be the keeper for the next 10 years. And that's good to know for Italian fans that you guys have a that's have right. a, a new Buffon, right? Not yeah, that the Gianluigi Buffon. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so... <laughs> yeah, no, good to know. Now, uh, going right into the defense, who do we have here, Sash? So this is a stacked defense from left to right. So we'll go... It's got Francesco, Acerbi, Lazio. We have Alessandro Bastoni, Inter. We have Leonardo Bonucci, who plays for my Juventus. Giorgio Chirieni, another player for Juventus. Giovanni Delenzo, who plays for Napoli. We have Emerson Parayamiani. Sorry for butchering his name. Plays for Chelsea. <laughs> Alessandro Florenzi, who plays for Paris Saint-Germain. Leonardo Spinazzola, who plays for Roma. And then we have Rafael Tolo, who plays for Atlanta. I mean, wow. <laughs> yeah, pretty strong team. Pretty strong team. It, it's kind of scary to think. Who are the who are the special ones that we should really be talking about here, Sash? It's got to be said. Bastoni, who just won the... Uh, Scudetto. Uh, Scudetto with Inter Milan was very mm -hmm. pivotal for that for that team and he was very been solid and of course we got the the veteran Kiliani who's going to be no doubt the captain and you know what he, he, he may be getting older and I don't know if he cements his spot in this Italian Missouri team but when he plays uh, to the caliber with his experience when he's been there done that with multiple of these different Italian teams throughout the years that he's going to be very very good and then we mm -hmm. also have, I think, we got to speak about Al Alessandro Florenzi, who is placed for Paris and a very, very good player going attacking forward. So to me, those are the really the three that stick out that come to mind. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think I think you're absolutely right. Uh, my only concern is with Chiellini. If uh, you know he's been injured with an ACL for most of the season, is he going to be fully fit? Has he played enough games uh, to be prepared for this Euros? Uh, I, I don't know if anyone has answers to those questions yet, but uh, that's going to be up to Mancini to decide. Uh, but now moving on to the midfielders, we have uh, Nicolo Barella for Inter, uh, Br Brian, Brian uh, Cristante for Roma, Jorginho for Chelsea, Manuel Locatelli for Sassuolo, Lorenzo Pellegrini for Roma, Stefano Sensi for Inter, and Marco Verratti for PSG. Pretty good midfield. Very good midfielder. It's actually like this is why they are a dark horse, and maybe this is gonna kind of really help them because there's not that many eyes on them. But this is a stack midfielders and very, mm -hmm. very good creative players on this team. Very, very scary to me. That's right. Yeah, Barella's had an incredible season. Uh, Verratti is a solid player at the back as as always, and uh, you know Jorginho, typical pivot playing well for Chelsea. He won the Champions League, so. 
again, another uh, another big player. Like you said, yeah, full of strong midfielders. For sure, and that, that's and another one that people maybe goes more under the radar and will actually be maybe doing a big summer move this year is Locatelli, who plays with Sassuolo, and he's actually a very good player that kind of plays a very all-around creative, knows how to take on players, good long passer, short passer, and this to me for Mancini might be the hardest kind of who do we put for the mids because mm -hmm. I, I really don't know. This is just so much firepower. This is tough, eh? Yeah, it, this to me is the headache for Mancini and I really like all of these players and I've seen, honestly probably my favorite has to be Barella. He's short, he's fast, he's he's like another, him and Verratti in the middle, they're going to cause riots, mm -hmm. really, they really are. For sure. Now onto the good stuff. Going, moving on to the forwards, uh, we have Andrea Andrea uh, Belotti for Torino, Domenico Berardi for Sassuolo, uh, Federico Bernadeschi for Juventus, Federico Chiesa for Juventus, Ciro Immobile for Lazio, uh, Lorenzo Insigne for Napoli, and uh, Giancomo Raspadori for Sassuolo. I'm not 100% sure about Raspadori. Wow, what do you know about this guy? Uh, not too much. He, I just know he's a good all-around striker that's been playing for Sassuolo and is a cemented position kind of. And not the fact that he's the most star player on that team because to me, Locatelli mm -hmm. and maybe even in this list, Domenico Baccarati are probably more bigger names than him. But mm -hmm. you know what, he's a good backup because I do not think he's going to get too much playing time with Immobile and Insigne in that lineup. And even that's Chiesa, right. you know, so... Yes, I'm having an unbelievable season. I think a breakout season, really. Uh, uh, after this one, I think he's, he's definitely all eyes are going to be on him, and I think he might be one of the superstars of this team. <laughs> definitely watch out for Kiesa. Any other big players uh, you want to mention? No, uh, like you said, I really do like Kiesa. He plays for my Juventus, and like you said, he's breakout season, if not one of the best players of all of Serie A this season, being mm -hmm. kind of that player that won them that last trophy that they played for Coppa Italia, scoring the game winner. He, he's a player of the, that attitude, of the passion when he plays, that I think out of all of these players that we mentioned, he has to be my favorite Italian player for a long time. I don't know, remember even me liking an Italian player, but I really, <laughs> get, uh, I really do. Yeah, I don't know if he's gonna be, you know, pure low level love, <laughs> but, <laughs> but no, he's definitely looking like he, he's got some promising stuff going for him. Uh, but is there any omissions that uh, that are noteworthy here? So I don't. I there's one I think everyone was kind of only one I'd say, and that's Moise Keane who plays for PSG. That's probably the biggest mm. one. That, and Moise Keane is big, comes off the bench for PSG, but. I think if a backup striker, he'd be a great backup striker. Young, youthful, very energetic. He could be a very good in the air. I mean, he scored against your Barcelona with that free kick, finishing off a header. So, you know, you know him. I don't remember. It was probably not that good of a goal. <laughs> maybe that's why he wasn't picked. Uh, maybe, but, maybe. Uh, <laughs> but uh, no, overall, I mean, they have a good team. I guess uh, they, they took mostly their strong players and you know, Bellotti is an other excellent striker, so I definitely don't blame uh, Mancini for going, you know, Bellotti over Moiskeen. And Moiskeen is a lot younger, you know, he'll have his opportunities that he can still get better and, and, you know, maybe he'll be in the World Cup, maybe he'll be in the next Heroes, who knows what's uh, what's up for him. Moving on, starting 11. What's our starting 11 here, Sash? So, Robert Mancini has been playing a 4-3-3. Seems that that must be the all-around formation for every team recently, but 4-3-3, and I think Starting from the back, goalkeeper, we both agree, has to be Donnarumma, the young goalkeeper from Milan, cemented for the rest of the Euro, 100%. Yeah, I think, you know, might be the best keeper in Syria, uh, definitely the best Italian keeper in my eyes. So um, I think I think that's a, that's a solid. <laughs> now moving on to the defense, what, uh, what are you thinking? So I think it has to go Florenzi and the fullback, Bastoni, Bonucci as the center backs, and Spidney Alzola and that's another fullback. I think those four are going to give you, they're going to give you, the fullbacks are going to give you creativity on the wings, they're going to give you balance mm -hmm. because they're also very good defense. And Bastoni and Bonucci are just very all around good veterans in the respective clubs. So I think that has to be the strongest back four for me in my opinion. Yeah, I, you know what, I agree. And 
I think the the defense really needs you know that that veteran style of Italian football. They're known for the defensive you know uh, work rate and the defensive structure they have, and with Bonucci there, uh, I think that's only going to cement that and you know reinstall that that wall like mentality that Italians <laughs> seem to have every year. <laughs> um, now, uh, now for the midfield uh, as a four three three, Barella has to be in there for sure. I think Verratti has to be in there for sure. Uh, but what uh, what do you think? Well, last position, I gotta go with Locatelli. Locatelli is too good. Uh, he's a very, very underrated player in my opinion, just because a lot of people don't know Sassuolo, and I've, I didn't know Sassuolo until I watched Serie A, but he is very fundamental for that, to get that rhythm for the team, and with mm-hmm. those three, all playing kind of very similar styles, Varela kind of played kind of like Verratti, very, all very creative, and very good defensively mm-hmm. also, I might add. So, those three positions, I'd say those are the strongest mids. Yeah, yeah, no. Seems solid to me. Very well rounded, as you've mentioned so far. And uh, now moving on to the attack. Obviously, yes, is in there. Uh, no Ronaldo beside him, though. So, uh, you know, maybe Insigne is going to have to pull some magic out of his hat. But who else are we adding to that pair? So, we're going to go with last year's Golden Boot winner for Serie A, Immobile. Has to, be, has to be said, the Golden Boot of last year, 37 goals. You know, he's going to be that player that, you know what, they don't have a lot of height. And that's why I think what will happen is those three pivots in the mid and those three smaller strikers with Chiesa, Immobile, and Senior, very small players. Mm-hmm. They're going to be no mm-hmm. aerial, so there's going to be very down the middle or very creating open plays and kind of working a good build-up play. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. I mean, the only tall players off the bench, uh, I think, might be Belotti. Uh, and even him, he's not super, super tall, but he can definitely score some headers. So at least they have some depth when it comes to, to heading. But this is going to be a team that, that works you uh, through the middle, through the wings, and, and it's really going to work on that, you know, build up play. The counterattacks are going to be through Chiesa for sure. A bit Insigne, but Insigne likes to already have, you know, his team back up with him. The whole team pushed up and then he can really work his magic with those one twos and those long range shots outside the box. That's a solid starting 11. What uh, what do you think, Seth? Uh, yeah, to me, this is a team that's going to go very far, actually. I think they can make it past the quarters. I don't know after that, depending on how they play, because they've had two big games for friendlies and scoring against, obviously, San Marino and Ch- and Czech Republic, those aren't big teams, but they've scored a very a lot of goals. It's 7 nothing, and then 4 nothing, 0 goal to the wow. So 11 goals in two games, a lot yeah. of power there, right? And from what I hear, they're, they're on a 26-game unbeaten run. So they're coming in here with a lot of heat. <laughs> and they have something to prove. So uh, really excited. Hopefully you liked the video. Uh, you know, this was a recommended video. So I'm glad we could uh, do this for you guys. And if you guys have any other recommendations, definitely let us know in the comment. Let us know, guys. We love it. We love it. There you go. <laughs> but cheers, guys. Love you guys. Thank you for watching. And for now, footy brews out. You,